Street Fighter Clone It's a term you've probably heard before to describe an old 90s fighting game that's usually not a term of endearment, but a way to write off particular games in the genre is nothing special to look into. While I could argue and talk about the fact that these so-called clones were essential to accelerating the fighting game genre's maturity all day, instead, I want to take a look at a fighting game that was doomed to just being known as that Street Fighter clone with a super hard boss, but could have been way more. Considering their importance in the arcades, it's surprising to look back and realize that the one genre that gaming pioneer Taito hasn't been able to have success in is fighting games. But that doesn't mean they haven't tried. After Street Fighter 2 came and changed everything, Taito retooled a prehistoric shoot-em-up they were developing into the bizarre stop-motion dinosaur fighting game Dino Rex to cash in on the booming fighting game genre. Despite coming out two years before Primal Rage, Dino Rex failed to take off and find an audience, mostly because the game is very bizarre and kinda sorta just not good. It is funny though. But Taito still didn't want to miss out on the fighting game cash cow completely. So two years later, in 1994, they tried again with their fighting game Kaiser Knuckle, also known as Global Champion for us Westerners. Kaiser Knuckle has your typical fighting game cast at the time, with a Japanese karate man, a bad to the bone radical American, a ninja, a boxer, a Brazilian jungle person, a Russian grappler, and even an evil dictator. You know, just all of your favorite Japanese fighting game cliches. Funny enough, the Western version, Global Champion, even tried to de-animate some of the characters to appeal to us dumb Americans more. But Kaiser Knuckle failed to take off in both Japan and the rest of the world, mostly because it didn't really set itself apart. The game plays just as you imagine. It's six buttons just like Street Fighter, but it's a bit slow, very derivative, and it doesn't feel as punchy as what Capcom and SNK were putting out at the time. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad game, but in the same month Kaiser Knuckle came out, Capcom's first Darkstalkers had released, and the definitive Super Turbo had already been out for months. So in comparison, Kaiser Knuckle felt, well, outdated. Fighting games were getting faster and more complicated, while Kaiser Knuckle felt like it was released alongside Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. But Kaiser Knuckle did have something to keep it from completely fading into obscurity, and it's the only reason why most people even know about the game today. It has a super hard final boss. Arguably one of the hardest fighting game bosses of all time the general. He has tons of health, reads all of your buttons, and kills you super fast. Defeating the general has become an arcade rite of passage, with the character's difficulty living on through YouTube challenge videos, getting ported into Mugen with his brokenness intact, and is even referenced in High Score Girl, which honestly gives Kaiser Knuckle a better legacy than most 90s fighters that have been forgotten by the general public. But what if I told you that there was a Kaiser Knuckle update? that made the game way more fun and gave the fighter tons of identity with some really cool ideas. But it just never officially came out. You see, legend has it that Taito apparently held location tests for an improved Kaiser Knuckle, but the feedback from players wasn't what they were looking for, so they scrapped the release for the project altogether. And with just that information, the mythical Kaiser Knuckle update would have been pretty low on my list of unreleased fighting games that I need to play. I mean... If the location test didn't do well, that means the update was bad, right? Well, mysteriously one day, an unreleased Kaiser Knuckle 2 prototype eventually known as Don Kugo was randomly leaked online, and to everyone's surprise, the prototype is actually super cool and changes the game completely for the better in almost every way. So let's take a look at Don Kugo and what makes it so special. First I'll be going over the general mechanics that Kaiser Knuckle and Don Kuga share, and then dive into the awesome additions that were made. So, as I said before, it's a 6 button fighter like Street Fighter, with 3 punches and 3 kicks of different strengths. Special move motions are mostly your standard affair with Hadouken and Shoryuken motions, but you also get some more experimental motions and moves thrown in, like a universal dive kick done by hitting down and all 3 kicks in the air. On each side you have the character's crush meter, which is filled when you get hit. Once full, your next special move that hits does 50% more damage, which obviously makes high damaging moves even scarier, and it's just a super interesting comeback mechanic that can change the pace of the match super hard. Interestingly, the crush meter even carries between rounds and doesn't go away until a special lands. Also, in SNK fashion, every character has desperation moves that they can pull off if they're close to death, and some of these moves are wonderfully over the top. 
But now let's go over what makes Don Kuga way cooler than vanilla Kaiser Knuckle. First of all, Kaiser Knuckle was pretty slow and moving felt kind of boring. Don Kuga spices things up by giving the characters invincible airborne backdashes to help get out of pressure, and most characters can even perform airborne specials straight from a backdash. But the biggest change of all though, that really sets Don Kuga apart and gives the game so many new and interesting layers, is that all air normals can be jump cancelled on hit or block, giving you another air action. This obviously opens up the game to many new ways of approaching and opening your opponent up. Being in the air can just get so scrambly in Don Kuga, and it's just so fun and such a unique mechanic that wasn't found in many fighters at this time. The air shenanigans really tie the last big change together, as Don Kuga also has juggles that are accessible to everyone. Hitting and knocking people in the air allows you to follow up with attacks and specials, and it just feels good and works exactly how you probably think it should. Kaiser Knuckle and Don Kuga also have an interesting wall mechanic, where at first the stage is pretty small and enclosed on both sides, but if an opponent is hit against the wall, it'll eventually break and widen the stage. But most importantly, you can now use this wall break to get even dumber juggles in Don Kuga, because breaking the wall resets juggles. It rules. For those who are more casually into fighters, these changes might not seem like the biggest deal. But these additions to Don Kuga truly are huge and make a run of the mill fighting game have so much more depth and give it the edge it needs. Mechanics like juggling may seem simple and obvious in the genre now, but having juggles be such a core design and combos for every character still wasn't commonplace yet. Don Kuga is just straight up fun and can stand amongst the other mid 90s greats that push the genre, where Kaiser Knuckle really couldn't. Also, Don Kuga is a legit training mode which is pretty ahead of its time for an arcade game. Don Kuga has 11 playable characters, two of them being bosses from Kaiser Knuckle that are now playable, so let's go over the whole cast real quick. First, we have Kazuya, who is our standard Shoto, but this time our karate man is wearing jeans, which automatically makes him super cool. He's a lot more loaded than Ryu with his kit too, so he's perfect for beginners and people just looking to win. He also has the titular Don Kuga attack. Bartz is our sorta guile charge character. He has the flash kick, he has the projectile, but it's done with a down charge up motion, and this just fries my brain for some reason. His regular sonic boom projectile charge motion is instead the thunder knuckle, which just feels powerful when you land it. Next is the ninja Geku, and I love this dude. He's got crazy air mobility with his double jump. He has an awesome shuriken attack that tears up the stage and stays there for great oki and his Tatsu is just so dumb and lets him get away with murder. He's so fun. Then we got Wulong, who is another sort of Shoto who can put on some wild pressure. His fireballs are good, he has a chicken wing that can be plus on block, his dive kick can cross up, he has nunchucks to knock you out of the air, and a DP that's hard to punish. This dude is scummy. I love it. Now there's Li Hua, who is our sword user. I honestly think she's the sickest character in the game, and she has tons of cool combos to keep the opponent blocking and jungled for days if they dare jump in on you. She's a little harder to pick up than others though, but how good her combos feel to pull off makes up for it. Then there's Liza, who is the annoying jungle character archetype, you know, like Blanca or Ryla from Breakers. These characters exist to annoy and be cheap, but Taito said nah, I also want her to be top tier, so let's give her Claw's wall dive. To add insult to injury, after she wins, she hits the dab on you too. Our next dude entering the ring is Jay McCoy, and speaking of cheap super turbo characters, he's no SD boxer. But he is super fun, has some cool combos, and will keep you guessing when you're allowed to press a button on defense. Up next is Boggy, who is a character that's a Japanese culmination of what 90s R&B was. So even if he's not the best character, it doesn't matter, cause he's Boggy. Also just look at his fireball. Marco is our obligatory 90s fighting game monster character, who is kind of like a big boy Dalsum. He's got good pokes, and even an instant overhead that can blow you up. Out of all the 90s fighting game monster freaks, Marco is definitely one of the most lovable. Don Kuga introduced Gonzalez as a playable character, and well, he's a Soviet grappler, but his name is Gonzalez, and he wears a gi and a coonskin hat. Japanese devs had a funny outlook on what the rest of the world looked like, Huh. But check out his desperation move and try to tell me that's not the sickest thing you've seen. 
Lastly, we have Azteca, who is a straight up Jojo pillar man. If you like good normals and Sonic the Hedgehog, you might like him. And those are all the characters. And sadly, the general does not make a playable appearance. And weirdly enough, they actually toned down his difficulty in the arcade mode. Maybe this is why the location test didn't do so well. Jokes aside, playing this game does leave me with one burning question. What the hell happened at the location test that made Taito shelf this game? The team behind Dankuga turned something forgettable into something special, but for whatever reason lost the time, it wasn't meant to be. Don Kuga was abandoned, and Vanilla Kaiser Knuckle never even got a home console port, truly leaving it behind in the arcades. It bumps me out that we don't live in the timeline where Don Kuga got its arcade release, because I truly think if the broader fighting game community had a chance at it years ago, then Don Kuga would be sitting pretty in the pantheon of fighters that people have realized are much more than just a Street Fighter clone. But hey, the silver lining in all this is that even though Don Kuga wasn't officially released in the arcades, its leak has given the game its fair shot at having a competitive scene almost 30 years after the prototype was last worked on, as Don Kuga is playable with Roback Netcode on Fightcade, where it's garnered a dedicated community. I'd like to put a spotlight on Go Billy, as his 2008 GameFAQs guide for Don Kuga was the only real western source of info on the game for a long time. But thankfully, now we have community members like Polar Bear who's been championing Don Kuga since being added to Fightcade by running tournaments for the game consistently and putting in major work into writing the wiki to help others get into this obscure gym. I know I've said that even the smallest games can have scenes if enough people show love, but yeah, even unreleased fighters can have dedicated players from all over the world putting in work, so shoutouts to the Don Kuga community. One last thing I want to comment on is that the soundtrack for Don Kuga absolutely has no business being as good as it is. The Taito sound team put every fiber of their being into the F3's Motorola sound chip because it's legit some of the best fighting game music of this era. Strangely enough though, there was an actual Kaiser Knuckles sequel plan that wasn't Don Kuga, so I guess Taito didn't think the series was a complete bomb. The Kaiser Knuckles sequel eventually got reworked into the fighter shmup mashup Psychic Force, which I think is funny because it kind of comes full circle with Dino Rex being a shmup that got reworked into a fighting game. Now I have talked about Don Kuga being officially unreleased plenty of times throughout this video, but I do have to reveal that the game technically did get a release in 2022 nonetheless, on the Egret 2 Mini Arcade console. I stopped buying these tiny arcades when I realized I only turned them on once and never again, because I have actual arcade cabinets, so I don't have this one. But I appreciate the Egret 2 Mini for randomly having Don Kuga on it anyways. This also means that this little game hasn't been totally forgotten by Taito, so maybe we'll see these characters in this game again in some other form at some point. But until then, check out the game on Fightcade, and have some fun with those already appreciating this unreleased classic. Thanks!